What is up everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with my bet so far for UFC UFC Orlando Thompson versus Holland. Now first things first please do me a huge favor hit that like button for me if you're new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of my new videos or live streams. So couple weeks ago it's been um for ufc fights and it was ufc vegas 65 and i'm gonna quickly go over that i ended up going eight and three on my bet on my picks and for my bets i ended up going four and one and i end up winning plus 3.18 units profit so pretty good night um oh i know there was a couple bets that i had that were canceled because of the Spivak, um, I'm going off. Hold on one second. Spivak and uh, Lewis. That's who it was. And um, yeah, pretty crazy. I don't last minute um, cancellation there. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think it was medical reasons or whatnot. But hey, I mean, it was just an OK card overall. Wasn't the greatest or anything. So um, what are you going to do about it? So that's all we can do. So like I said, I'm going to quickly go over that real quick with everybody here. And let me just jump into there. Okay, so I'm just going to skip through this real quick because it's been two weeks. Uh, Natalia Silva versus Bleda. Silva looked great. She impressed me yet again. She looks really good, and she looks like a really good prospect. Bleda just kind of gassed out, but I think there's still a lot of potential in Bleda, though. Uh, high stand versus Garcia, not the greatest fight. Um, high stand did what he needed to do. Uh, just wrestle Garcia, and he got the victory. Um, not really too impressed either way, but I mean, he's got he's young too. So, uh, Demopolis versus Oliveira, pretty impressed with Demopolis. She actually worked on her takedowns. It looked like she had a good ground game. Um, she had decent stand up, and I wasn't really too impressed with Oliveira. I had a bet on her. That was the only bet that I did lose. I thought she'd be able to outstrike her and stay at range, but she totally couldn't. So, um, good win for Vanessa. Uh, Tur Tercios versus Natividad. Um, I'll be honest. I think Natividad might have won that fight. It was very close. Um, I think they probably gave Tercios the third round because he ended up um, in, I think he was on his back for at the end of it, and maybe that's why it gave him the third round. But I thought Natividad landed the better shots, and he got more takedowns. And But it was a crazy fight. It could have went either way. So not really. I'm not crying robbery here. But I thought Natividad did what, he needed to do. He did. He had a good game plan, and I thought he might have got the win. But good win for Ricky. He needed that win. Uh, Miles Johns versus Morales. Johns looked really good in that fight. Um, kind of boring fight, but he did what he needed to do. Uh, Maya versus Moroz. Maya looked great. I picked Maya as an underdog. Didn't better though. I was a little scared, but she looked great. Good boxing. Um, I thought she might have won all three rounds, but she clearly won 29-28 at the very least. So good win for her. Charles Johnson versus Zalgus. Um, controversy, another controversy of the night. I personally thought Zalgus won that fight. Uh, Johnson didn't really do too much until the third round. And um, yeah, I thought Zalgus did enough for the first and second round. So what are you going to do? That's the UFC for you. Uh, Jack Della Maddalena versus Danny Roberts. Jack looked great, of course. We all knew that. And he is going to be a problem. Uh, Salikov versus Fialho. Salikov looked good too. Uh, Fialho looked good in the first round, and then I think there he was hurt in the body, maybe his right side, I believe, because he wasn't throwing a lot with his right hand and he was kind of like keeping it in, like he was like his rib hurt or something. So I don't know if he got hit there or something, but um, Muslim ended up getting the knockout and good win from him. Uh, Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Chase Sherman. Uh, boring fight a little bit, but um, Waldo did a little bit more than Chase and ended up getting the nod and not really impressed with both these guys. I picked Chase Sherman, but what are you going to do? I thought this fight could have gone either way. And then the main event that ended up being um, Kennedy versus Ian Kutalaba. Kennedy looks great, dude. Like he is improving in every one of his fights. He looks dangerous. Um, good takedown defense. Good knees. He landed three flying knees, I believe, with Ian Kutalaba. And got the knockout. He's just a big dude for the light heavyweight division. Um, yeah, he's just, I think he's going on up. I'm not saying he's championship material, but he's moving on up. He's getting better every fight, like I said. 
And like I said, here's my bets. The only bet that I did lose was the Oliveira and everything else I did win and end up winning 3.18 units profit. So pretty good night overall. Not going to complain. Like I said, I had a couple bets that were voided because of the Spivak fight being canceled last minute, but I'll take 3.18 units all day. So let's jump into the UFC fight night of UFC Orlando. We'll go to the first fight of the night, which is going to be a pretty good one, actually. We got Yasmin Jargui, Jargui, I can't say it, versus uh estella nunez yasmin is nine and zero 23 years old five three with a 64 inch reach and nunez is six and three 30 years old five four with a 66 inch reach so both women are strikers um but after watching yasmin's last fight against lucinda she definitely is going to have the power advantage i believe and she's going to have the cardio advantage to go all three rounds because nunez does not have the cardio to go all three rounds. She she looks good in the first round, but as the fight goes on after that, she slows down and fades, and her cardio it looks like it's just depleted in the third round at least. And it happened to her in her last couple fights, actually. So I'm going to go with Yasmin here. Like I said, I think she's the better striker. It might look close early on in the first round, but I think um, Yasmin's going to take end up taking over later in the fight. If, if Nunez does win the first round and she should win 29-28, Yasmin should win 29-28 or 30-27 here. And maybe potentially even get a late knockout with Nunez gassing, like I said. So um, with my pick, though, I'm going to go with Yasmin to win by decision. Um, the only reason why I'm going with that is because Yasmin has never been knocked out. She's been subbed a couple times. And Yasmin's more so a striker. I don't, I don't know if she's going to be able to get a maybe a club and sub maybe, but um, I think it'll go to decision. It'll be a it'll be a fun fight to see Yasmin fight again. And um, looking forward to this one. Should be a good one to start the night off. All right, next fight we got is Francis Marshall versus Marcelo Rojo. And Marshall is six and zero, 23 years old, five nine with a seventy two inch reach. And Rojo is 16 and 8, 34 years old, 5'8", with a 71-inch reach. So Marshall is very well-rounded. He's got good striking. He's got a good ground game, good wrestling and takedowns. He's making his UFC debut um, in his last fight on the Contender Series against Colin, or Connor uh, Matthews. He ended up winning unanimous decision. He looked pretty good in that fight, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I do think he was going for that finish. He was trying and trying, but he just couldn't get it. Um, but I think this will be a good test for him though. This is a good matchup. I like it. Um, Rojo is a good striker with good power early on, but he's kind of like, uh, Nunez a little bit that we just went over his cardio fades as the fight goes on. And he, I think he's kind of like a first round or bus fighter almost. And I think it's going to be more of the same here. Rojo will look good early. He may up may end up winning rounds one round one, but as the fight goes on, I think Marshall should, will be able to use his wrestling maybe wear down Rojo a little bit. Um, Rojo doesn't have the greatest takedown defense, so I definitely think uh, Marshall can get him down. And uh, I'm going to go with Marshall here as my, with my pick. I think he he might even be able to get the finish later on in the fight, maybe second or third round with maybe a sub because Rojo has been subbed five out of his eight losses in the UFC. And um, Marshall does have four subs out of his six wins. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Marshall here and I'm going to say he gets that second round submission. Um, it'll be a good fight. I'm looking forward to see what Marshall can do here. All right. Third fight we got is Natan Levy versus Gennaro Valdez. Levy is seven and one, 31 years old, five, nine with a 72 inch reach. And Valdez is 10 and one, 30 years old, five, nine with a 72 inch reach. So. Levy's a good grappler. He's got good submissions. His striking is okay. I think it's kind of a work in progress, but it's nothing fantastic. Um, Valdez is a crazy wild striker. He's got good takedowns and good wrestling. His cardio can be a problem because he does like to go all out in that first round, and he does have a lot of first-round finishes. But in his last fight against uh, Frivola, 
he tried to go all out and Frivola is one of those guys where he's going to go all out and Frivola ended up just getting the better of him in this fight or, or in that fight. But this is kind of tricky because um, Valdez isn't going to change the way he is. Like he's just going to go in there. He's going to look for that early finish and Levy's going to need to weather that storm early. Um, maybe try to get a takedown of his own um, work, his grappling, but um yeah, on the feet, like like I said, it's Valdez is kind of wild. He does have good good power, and Levy's striking is just kind of okay. But um, I'm gonna go with Levy here. I'm not super confident. Um, if he can get out of the first round, I'll definitely feel more confident. But he's gonna have to use his grappling here, and uh, maybe wear him down a bit. Um, I do think he he should be able to weather the storm here. I think, and um, he'll take advantage of that cardio issues that Valdez will have in the second round. And I think he'll end up getting that takedown, use his grappling and get that submission. So with my pick, I'm going to go with Levy to get the win. I'm going to say by submission in the, let's just say second round. I think that's good. All right. Next fight should be a good one here. We got Tracy Cortez versus Amanda Hebus. Uh, Cortez is 10 and one, 28 years old, five, five with a 65.5 inch reach. And Hebus is 11 and 3, 29 years old, 5'3, with a 66 inch reach. So both women have great ground games. Cortez might have the slight advantage in the wrestling department, but I would give Hebus the slight advantage in the uh, Jiu Jitsu department. But it's super close. But here's where I think the fight is going to make or break, is going to be in the striking department. And I like Hebus is striking way more. And I think that should be the game plan here for Hebus. Keep the fight on the feet as much as possible. Um, but if she does get taken down or go for takedowns on her, of her own, I mean, she can definitely do that. We've seen it in the, her last fight against Chikagian. She got a couple takedowns. She couldn't really do too much with them, but she looked really good against her in the striking department, a very close fight. Um, I personally had Chukagian barely edging that out just because Hebus didn't do too much with those takedowns. But, um, I mean, it could have went to, on the Hebus side here, but I just think the only way Cortez can win this fight is if she gets those takedowns and controls her on the map for most of the fight. But Hebus can outstrike her, definitely. And she works very good off her back. She's got good submissions, so it's going to be a little dicey for Cortez here. But, uh, um. Yeah, I've got to go with Rebus here. I know this is going to be a pretty close fight, probably. Um, also, too, Rebus's losses have only come against really good strikers. And I just don't think Cortez is on the same level as Hebus or or someone like um, Marina Rodriguez or Chikagian that Hebus lost to. So with my pick, I'm going to go with Hebus here. And I'm going to say it's going to be a very close decision, but I think Hebus will squeak it out here 29-28 unanimous i think i think the judges will know i don't think they're going to go to split here we'll see though all right next fight is going to be a fun one this is one of my guys i always root for local guy made good darren elkins versus jonathan pierce elkins is 27 and 10 38 years old 5 10 with a 71 inch reach and pierce is 13 and 4 30 years old six foot with a 71 inch reach so both these guys are wrestler, grappler kind of guys. They don't have the greatest striking. I will give Pierce the slight edge, though, in the striking. But, I mean, that's not saying much because I don't think this fight's going to be on the feet for the majority of this fight. The wrestling is super close. Um, maybe maybe you give that to Elkins with his takedowns. He's got good takedowns, He's, and he has the cardio to back it up. He always goes for takedowns after takedowns until he gets it. Um, but maybe Pierce has the better jujitsu and submissions, but, um, Elkins, like I said, has really good cardio and we've seen Pierce kind of slow down as the fight goes on. Um, especially if he's on a feet majority of the time, but he does have like a different cardio when he's grappling. It's weird. It's kind of like Petrosky, like on the feet, you think Petrosky is gassed and, but on the ground, once he gets scrambling, like he looks like he's full of energy. So that's kind of like with Pierce. He has a different grappling cardio, but he does slow down as the fight goes on. And Elkins just keeps going, push, keeps pushing forward. Um, but this is this. I mean, the line is really wide, I think. And I'm I don't like it. I, I think it's kind of disrespectful to Elkins here. But uh, maybe people are just going off of his 
off that one fight where he lost against Cub Swanson, but he came back and looked great against Tristan Conley. So I got to go Pierce here and it breaks my heart to do it. Um, But Elkins is live in this fight, especially in the third round. He gets a lot of his finishes in the third round. He just grinds on his opponent until and wears them down until they just break and he either gets a submission or it's like a ground and pound knockout. But like I said, I got, I've got to go Pierce here. I think he can win rounds one and two and survive round three. And, but I'm not touching this line whatsoever. Um, I think a good dog play would be Elkins round three. I think it's pretty automatic. And um, yeah, I'm going to say by, I think Pierce is going to win here by decision and, but I'm going to be rooting for Elkins. I'm not going to lie, but that's my pick. All right, next fight, we got Michael Johnson versus Mark Diacasey. Michael Johnson is 20 and 18, 36 years old, 5'10", with a 73.5 inch reach. And Diacasey is 16 and 5, 29 years old, 5'10", with a 73 inch reach. So Johnson's a good striker. He's got good power. He doesn't really have the greatest ground game. Doesn't really have the greatest fight IQ. His takedown defense is pretty good, actually. But once he gets taken down, like, it's almost going to be game over because he can't get back up. Um, one of those kinds of things. But like I said, his fight IQ, that's that's the big thing here. And Dia Casey, he's well-rounded, has good striking. He kind of developed this um, wrestling game that he's been using lately and has looked really good. He's got good top control in his last two fights. And I think that's the way he does it in this fight. I think he uses his wrestling. He gets those takedowns. He stays on top, works for submissions or ground and pound. And if this fight does stay on the feet, it's going to be closer. Um, but I still like the Casey here. I, I just, it's hard to back Michael Johnson in any of his fights because he just ends up doing something very low IQ to put it nicely. So um, with my pick, I'm going to go with Dia Casey here. I think he gets it done pretty easily here by decision. He just has to use his wrestling and get those takedowns. Um, like I said, if he doesn't, if he's not able to, it'll look a little bit closer, but I do think he'll be able to outstrike him and, um, get the decision win here. Let's move on up to the next one here. We got Clay Guida versus Scott Holtzman. Guida is 37. And 22, 40 years old, 5'7", with a 70-inch reach. And Holtzman is 14 and 5, 39 years old, 5'9", with a 69-inch reach. So, Guida's kind of like a high-pressure grinder style of fighter here. He's got good takedowns and good wrestling. His striking is okay. It's nothing great either. Um, he uses his striking striking mainly to set up his takedowns. Uh, Holtzman's a good striker. He's got very good power. He's really strong. Takedown defense isn't the greatest. Is that 66%? He does have some wrestling that he can use, but I'm not sure he wants to take this to the fight, take the ground or take the fight to the ground. I think he's going to have the advantage on the feet. Um, But yeah, for me, I think I'm going to go with the underdog here. I'm going to go with Guida here. I just think Holtzman's only chance really is to get that knockout early. And um, I think otherwise, Guida's going to be able to grind out a decision win, win, win with his wrestling and win with his high, win with his high pace and put the pressure on Holtzman and kind of break him, kind of like Darren Elkins. They're both kind of the same style of fighter. And um, honestly, the last time Guida's been knocked out was in 2016, and he's only been knocked out twice in his UFC career. He mainly gets subbed if he gets finished, but... Um, yeah, I like Guida here as an underdog. I'm not too impressed with Holtzman. Um, both these guys are older, so there's no really age advantage. And I do think Guida's going to have the better gas tank. He has, I think he's more of the, he's kind of like the Elkin style where he's just grind, he grinds on you. He, he keeps pushing forward. He does what he, he does always. He he just goes for takedowns after takedowns and gets them. So uh, I'm, like I said, going with Guida here for an underdog pick. Um, and I think he gets it done by decision. I don't see any finish or anything. I think the only finish that could happen would be Holtzman knockout. But like I said, Guida hasn't been knocked out in a lot in a while. So um, yeah, first underdog pick. Let's go. Next fight. We have Angela Hill versus Emily Dakota. 
Hill is 14 and 12, 37 years old, 5'3", with a 64.5-inch reach. And Dakota is 12 and 6, 28 years old, 5'2", with a 63-inch reach. So both women are mainly strikers. They both do have some wrestling and grappling that they can use, but they're definitely strikers first. Hill has really quick strikes, not the greatest power. She has, she's got good counters and she always, and she has a good cardio and likes to push forward. Uh, Dakota has a little bit more power. She's got good straights and good leg kicks. Um, but just like in every one of Angela Hill's fights, this fight's going to be close and I'm not too sure who I want to pick. Um, Hill's going to be the older fighter. She's got more experience. She's fought the higher level competition. Um, Dakota is the younger, probably stronger. Um, and she hasn't fought the high level competition that Hill's fought. So this is tough. Um, I'm going to go with Dakota here. I just like what I saw in her fight. And I know it, we know what Angela Hill is. I don't want to say she's a gatekeeper in a way, but I kind of feel like she is. She's lost a lot of split decisions. Some of should have went her way. Some probably shouldn't have went to split decision. Um, but like I said, this is going to be a close fight in every one of Angela Hill's fights. They're always close. So I'm going to go with Dakota to get the nod here. Um, it's going to be really close. Like I said, <laughs> I said close like 90 times, but um, I just think Dakota will land that more impactful shots. She'll beat up that leg a little bit and maybe get a takedown of her own and, and just steal some rounds and stuff. So yeah, with my pick, I'm going to go with Dakota to win by decision, maybe even split decision. It's going to be a really close fight. I'd stay away from this one. I, I don't feel comfortable with any bet here. All right, moving on up the card. We got Nico Price versus Philip Rowe. Nico Price is 15 and 5, 33 years old, 6 foot with a 76 inch reach. And Rowe is 9 and 3, 32 years old, fighting out of Orlando, mind you. 32 years old, 6'3", with an 80.5 inch reach. So this is going to be a fun fight. Both these guys go for it. They're both finishers, or at least they try to finish the fight. Uh, Price has solid striking, kind of wild and crazy at times. A little unorthodox, if you want to say. He's got good wrestling and grappling. Pretty well-rounded. Um, Rowe is a good striker. He's got good power. He doesn't really have the greatest takedown defense, but he does have decent grappling and, and submissions. And this is another tough fight here. And I think this will play out close. But I'm going to go with the underdog in, in Rowe. I know Rowe started out as a favorite, and I think the line flipped a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Roe. I think as tough as price can be, he's been finished four out of his five UFC losses and Rose Roe has really good power for this division. And especially he's going to have a three inch height and four and a half inch reach advantage. And I think he's going to be able to keep his range for most of the fight. And I do think he'll be able to get that knockout shot or maybe even do like a club and sub we've seen. Price get rocked a couple times when he's trying to go in and make it make the fight like a brawl, if you want to say. But um, yeah, Roe does have a few subs in his career, so he can, like I said, he can get that su uh, club and sub maybe. So uh, I think I'm just gonna go with the more dangerous guy. I feel like, and I think Roe is a little bit more dangerous. I know, like I said, Nico's a little wild and crazy. He likes to come forward, but he's not afraid to get hit. But I think Roe has the more power. And um, he, I think he has that sneaky um, submission threat too, as well. If he can just get in the right position, maybe like a rear naked choke, he's going to be the taller guy as well. So um, yeah, I'm, with my pick, I'm going to go with another underdog here in row. And I do think he's going to get that knockout in the second round, maybe a club and sub. So if you want to do like a finish bet here for row, that could be a possibility because I can see a club and sub as well. But I think just a money line bet if he's the underdog is probably the way to go. Good fight here though. All right, so now we are to the main card of Eric Anders versus Kyle Dawkins. Anders is 14 and 7, 35 years old, 6'1", with a 75-inch reach. And Kyle Dawkins is 11 and 3, 29 years old, 6'3", with a 76-inch reach. So Anders has decent striking. He's got good power. He's got okay wrestling and takedown defense. Um. I, I I kept trying to see if I could find something 
like that he's really good at it. I don't I just don't see really anything that he's really good at. I mean, he's really strong. I'll give you that. Uh, Doc is again decent striking, okay wrestling and takedowns. He's got good takedown defense, and he's got pretty good grappling and submissions. Um, definitely better grappling than Anders or Anders here. So, um, yeah, that's the only difference here. I think both these guys are really close, being the same kind of fighter, but. I got to give Dawkins the grappling and submission edge here. And for me, I think that's what it comes down to is the grappling. Um, if it's on the feet, I would say Anders has a little bit more power, maybe more KO ability if he lands because he doesn't have the most technical striking and Dawkins can survive on the feet, but we've seen him get knocked out a couple times here or especially as of late, which was five months ago in UFC Austin, which I was at and delete say, Ooh, made him look foolish. That was brutal knockout. But it's been five months. I think that's enough time. It's a little red flag for me, but um, yeah, I'm going to go with Doc is here. I think he's going to have to use his grappling. It will be a close fight if he doesn't, but if he can get this fight to the ground, um, maybe getting maybe get his back a couple times here, and I think he's going to be able to get a decision win here. I don't see a finish, um, but this is going to be a weird fight. But give me, give me Doc is here by decision. Kind of a weird fight to break down. I think they're both kind of the same other than the grappling with Doc is, like I said. <clears throat> All right. So next fight is going to be a very good fight. Uh, Jack Hermanson versus Roman Delidze. Hermanson was supposed to fight Derek Brunson, and I really, 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 really like Jack Hermanson in that fight. <clears throat> but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> so Jack Hermanson is 23 and 7, 34 years old, 6'1", with a 77.5 inch reach. And Delitze is 11 and 1, 34 years old, 6'2", with a 76 inch reach. So this could be fight of the night for sure. Uh, Hermanson's a very well-rounded guy. He's known for his wrestling and grappling, but he has developed some good striking over the years. Um, he looked good in his last fight against Chris Curtis with his striking. Didn't really even try to go for takedowns if he did at all. And um, he outstruck Chris Curtis. So, I mean, he looked really good in that fight. And then he just couldn't outstrike Sean Strickland. And even though it went to split decision, that, I mean, Strickland won that all easily. It should have been unanimous. So his striking is, it's, it's developed. Like I said, it's, it's slowly developing into um, doing pretty good. Um, Delice is, I mean, he's a monster lately. He's got power striking, super explosive, um, good in the clinch. He's got good wrestling, good takedowns, amazing grappling and submissions. And like I said, I really like Jack's chances against Brunson if that fight would have held up. But I'm going to go with another underdog here. And I know Delice is on kind of short notice, I think about two weeks or so. And, and I think by fight night, it'll be three but give me Delizze here. I think I think he'll be able to overwhelm Jack early in the fight. I think he'll like push forward and blitz him kind of like he like Delizze has been doing. It's been working out for him lately. And um we've seen Jack get overwhelmed a couple times if that happens and um I think Roman can get the knockout here. Jack's been knocked out a couple times in his career. Um but Delice has real power. And if this fight does get to the mat, it'll be close. But I would give Delice the, like the slight grappling advantage because, man, he's really he's really good and really underrated, Delice is. So, yeah, with my pick, I'm going to go with Delice. I think he's going to continue his war path of destruction. He's going he's, to, if this fight does get out of the second round into the third, maybe it gets a little bit dicey for him. But I think his cardio will be able to hold up. For at least two rounds. And I'm going to go with Delice to get that knockout in the first. I don't think it's going to be going to get into the second round. I think Delice has been just on a war path lately. And I think he's going to continue it right now. <clears throat> Next fight is going to be a, a great fight for however long it lasts. It's going to be Tai Tuivasa versus Sergey Pavlovich. Tuivasa is 15 and 4, 29 years old, 6'2 with a 75 inch reach. And Pavlovich is 16 and 1, 30 years old, 6'3 with an 84 inch reach. So 
So both these guys are power strikers. Ty likes to get into a firefight a lot of the times. He likes to get inside, work that dirty boxing, um, brawl it out, if you want to say. Um, Pavlovich likes to push forward. He's going to have the nine-inch reach advantage in this fight. He's a little bit taller with an inch. He might even be taller, have more of a height advantage, because I think Ty's a little little shorter than a 6'2", but I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, Pavlovich has a good power in his hands. He hits like a truck. Ty hits like a truck. Um, the only thing that kind of worries me is Ty's coming back from, in, from two months and that Gon was just beating him up all fight. I mean, he did drop Gon once, but most of that fight was gone all day. He was beating up the body. He was touching him up in the face. And we know Ty's a very tough dude. Um, man, this is going to be a close fight. Ty has a chance here, but I know one thing about this fight. This fight's definitely going to go under one and a half rounds. Because both these guys are finishers. They usually get the fight out of there in the first or second round. I know Sergi or Sergey likes to get his fights out of the in the first round. He gets a lot of first round finishes. So I'm gonna go with Pavlovich here. Not like super confident that he's gonna win this fight. I'm I mean, I like his reach advantage. He'll be if he stays at range for a little bit and maybe just blitzes Ty whenever he gets that opportunity at the right time. But um, I do like the under one and a half here for sure. <clears throat> and um, yeah, give me Pavlovich here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he gets it done in the first round like he's been doing. And um, I think this fight's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a brawl for however long it lasts. But it wouldn't shock me if Ty gets that knockout. It's going to be a good fight. Next fight we have is Mateus Nicolau versus Matt Schnell. Nicolau is 18-2 and 1, 29 years old, 5'6", with a 66-inch reach. And Chanel is 16 and 7, 32 years old, 5'8", with a 70-inch reach. So Nicolau, I mean, both these guys, <clears throat> they're pretty well-rounded. They have good striking, good ground games. I'll give Nicolau the more technical, like, striking, if you want to say. But he's kind of low volume, which kind of uh, scares me a little bit. Um, Chanel is kind of like a wild card. Uh, I know he, <laughs> I know he won his last fight against Sue Madarji, but Sue had him rocked like five or six times, and that was like one of the craziest fights of the year. But he ended up getting that finish somehow, and good for him. Um, how long ago was that? That was four months ago. So not saying Nicolau is like you know the greatest KO artist, but um, who knows? Maybe he can get, maybe he can rock him again. But um, I'm going to go with Nicolau here. I just think he is the better overall fighter, if you want to say. The only thing that does scare me is, with him is him being kind of low volume. Doesn't want to, like, go in and, you know, potentially you know, get caught or something like that. I don't even know why he does that. But um, And even he could potentially, Nicolau can potentially even get, like, a club and sub kind of thing here because, I mean, Chanel's been finished a lot in his career. Um, but, you know. He's been guillotined by Roy Val, which is a really good grappler. He's been knocked out by Pantoja, who's really good or everywhere. And I think Nicolau is maybe just a, like a step below those guys. But I think he can get it done here. <clears throat> he can probably just outstrike him and win a in boring decision. Or he can maybe go for the finish because we've seen Schnell get rocked, like I said, or maybe a club and sub. So, I mean, there's not a lot going here for Schnell. He's going to have to fight a perfect fight. Um, but I like Nicolau here. I think he's going to find a way to win this one. Whether, but, but I'm going to say decision. I just think he's the better fighter overall, even though he's not very entertaining. So I like him to win this fight, though. <clears throat> Call me an event time. We have RDA versus Brian Barberina. Let's click on that. Come on. <clears throat> RDA is 31 and 14, 38 years old. 5'8 with a 70 inch reach, and Barbarina is 18 and 8, 33 years old, 6 foot with a 72 inch reach. Sip on some of my coffee, it's early. All right, so RDA is super well rounded. He's got good striking, good counters, good power, very good wrestling and takedowns as of late, especially. And Barbarina is known for being like a brawler. He's got good striking, not the biggest KO power kind of guy. He's got solid cardio, good volume, but he can be taken down and controlled very easily. And that is the key in this fight <clears throat> because 
As I said, RDA has been using his wrestling lately a lot. He has good control when he's on top. And I think that's the way he wins this fight. I think he uses that wrestling. He can get the takedowns. If on the feet, I think he can definitely hold his own against Barbarina. Um, I know RDA was just knocked out by Fiziev three months ago. But I mean, that's a little red flag. He's kind of getting up there in age, but this guy's a this guy's a beast, though. I mean, I think that was his first knockout in a long time, if not first or so i'm not too worried about barbarina getting that knockout on rda physiev is way more explosive and has way more power but give me rda here i'm not touching the line i think it's over 500 now minus 500 um i don't even really know an angle you can maybe do is that maybe the over i don't see barbarina is pretty tough dude he doesn't really get finished too much um yeah not even in his last five yes i don't want to look it up so yeah, give me RDA here. I think he'll win a decision here pretty comfortably, especially if he uses that wrestling. 30-27 all day. RDA all day. <laughs> and the main event here, we got Steven Wonderboy Thompson versus Kevin Holland. Thompson is 16, 6, and 1, 39 years old, 6 foot with a 75-inch reach. And Holland is 23 and 8, 30 years old, 6, 3 with an 81-inch reach. So both these guys are mainly strikers, but they're totally different kinds of strikers. Thompson's more of a karate based guy. He likes to use his leg kicks, stay at range. And Holland likes to use his boxing, use his hands. He's got, he always is going to have the reach advantage in this division. I believe it's a six inch reach advantage. Yes, it is. And a three inch height advantage. And he definitely has the KO power. I don't know so much if Thompson has that KO power unless he lands one of those like spinning kicks that Holland might not see. But um, yeah, again, I think the only way Thompson's going to win this fight is if he fights a perfect fight for five rounds. Holland always finds a way against strikers to, if he looks bad early, he comes back better in the second or third rounds and he's got the power to do it. He's got the reach to do it. Um, and I think he's going to get that knockout. Um, he even might have, he probably does, I should say, has the grappling edge for submission. So we've seen um, Kevin Holland use some of his grappling and wrestling, and maybe he can get a takedown on Thompson just to mix things up a bit. But, um, I mean, Thompson's always tricky. He's always going to be tough to get out of there. But I like Holland here. Like I said, he always finds a way against strikers to win the, win the striking fight. Um I mean, if Thompson had good grappling or wrestling, I would be more willing to bet on Thompson or pick him, but he's just mainly a striker. He's got nothing else. So, um, yeah, with my pick, I'm going to go with Holland here to get the knockout. I'm going to say in the third round, maybe fourth round, but um, I like Holland here to get the job done. Thompson's getting a little up there in age. He's a little bit slower. Um, Holland is in his prime right now, and he's got good straights and good power. I like it, so... Give me, give me Holland here for the, uh, for the win. Okay, that's it for the picks. I'm going to quickly go over the bets that I have so far. And my first bet, since I just talked about it, is going to be Kevin Holland. I have a 1.5 unit bet on him at minus 110 odds. I just think he's going to be able to find a way to get the, the Thompson to get that knockout. Um, and then my next bet is a three-fighter parlay. It's going to be Yargui, Yasmin, I can't say her last name, Nikolau, and Diakis to win, and I got that at plus 133. I think all of these fighters have the best chance to have the easiest path to victory for me. Yasmin's going to have the better striking, um, and she can definitely win rounds two and three very early on. Mark is going to have the wrestling advantage. He's going to need to use that wrestling advantage. Clear path to victory for him right there. And with the last one with Nicolau, I just think he's the better fighter, though he is low volume. I think he's the better striker, and he's got a very good ground game and good takedown defense if Schnell wants to take it to the ground. So give me Nicolau here as well for that parlay. And I'll probably have more bets as the week goes on. And I, like I said, I always post those on Instagram and Twitter, all that good stuff. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. And 
You can check back on my Instagram, my Twitter. I always post my bet slips on there. Or if you want to check back on this video in the comment section, I always post my bets there as well. Um, yeah, and that's all I got for you today. And hope everybody enjoys the fights this weekend. Hopefully, it's a little bit better than it was on the USC Vegas 65. And until next time, happy fight night.